Hello crafty friends, welcome to this video in which I create this card for you using smushing, splattering, stenciling, stamping and die cutting. I think that's it. So my card blank is going to be approximately 5 by 7 inches and I've cut a panel of smooth white cardstock using this stitched edge rectangle die. To start with I popped my panel on my grip mat and then smushed some tattered rose distress oxide onto my glass mat, spritzed it with water and then picked it up with my smusher. If you want to know how to make and use a smusher there is a whole playlist which I will link up in the eye and in the video description. Once I'd added the first layer of smushed ink I dried it with my hairdryer and then added a second layer. I wanted to bring in a bit more saturation, a bit more intensity of colour. So I smushed some dried marigold distress oxide onto my glass mat and added some cosmic shimmer pixie dust in white. I then spritzed that with water again and mixed it all up with a paintbrush which I then used to splatter the sparkly orange paint onto my card panel. I didn't want to waste any of that lovely sparkly paint so I used my smusher to add it to a spare piece of paper which I left to dry. Next I brought my panel back in, popped it on my grip mat again and chose a stencil with quite a small pattern on it and brushed some tattered rose through the stencil, peeling back the stencil every once in a while to check how my stenciling was going. I just wanted to add a bit of subtle pattern over my smushed ink area. As well as that stenciled pattern, I wanted to add a bit of text, but in the background. So I used some alpha stamps, which I picked up recently from the works. They're a lovely, grungy, old fashioned typewriter font. And I decided to spell out the word hope because I wanted this card to be a kind of um, hopeful, we're here for you type card. But I didn't want it to be too obvious. I wanted the hope to be part of the background pattern. So I stamped it first in Tattered Rose, which is quite light. And then I brought in the dried marigold and only stamped a couple of dried marigold hopes at full strength. The rest I did second generation stamping so that it wasn't too bold. Once the stamping was done and the ink was dry, I used high tack glue to stick my panel to my card blank. The panel's not quite big enough to go the full seven inches, so I sliced the bottom of the card off using my guillotine. To embellish the card, I used a new to me branchy leafy die. I first cut it out in vellum and then I cut it out in white cardstock. The white cardstock one I put on my grip mat and added a light blush of dried marigold to it. This just gives it a little bit of dimension I think, a little bit of colour and stops it looking quite so stark on the card. I used high tack glue again to stick the vellum branch down to the card and then the white with the ink on it branch on top of that and, and I do like to use vellum die cuts for layering pieces. They add a bit of softness, a bit of etherealness to the card I think. So I stuck the vellum down with the high tack glue and then I stuck the cardstock branch on top of that slightly offset so you can still see that vellum branch peeking out and I did make sure to have some of the leaves on the left hand side hanging over the edge of the panel just to break up all the straight edges there. Now 
for my sentiment, I die cut a here for you using a strip die where the letters are apertures in the strip. I then used dried marigold to colour a piece of cardstock which I cut down and popped behind the here for you strip so the letters look orange, so it's an orange sentiment on a white piece of card. Before sticking that down though, I did feel I wanted something else. I thought about butterflies, I thought about flowers, but I thought, no, keep it simple, just do another branch. And I actually used the sparkly dried marigold smush background to cut a smaller branch. And I really like the way this looks on top of those other branches. To add my sentiment strip I used craft foam for a bit of dimension. I did leave a break in the craft foam where the strip was going to go over the twigs or the stems of the branch, whatever they're called, I don't know, <laughs> so that it stayed level and it didn't go bumpy where it went over that area. As a finishing touch, as usual, I bought in my White Nouveau drops and I added them to the round portions of the branches where it looked like there may be flowers or berries rather than leaves. And this gives a bit of gloss, a bit of dimension to the card. I also added a few more around and about the place to create a sense of flow. Some of these white Nouveau drops will probably absorb some of the ink from the card and tint dried marigold or tattered rose, but that's absolutely fine. I do like a little bit of variation like that. If I'd wanted my drops to stay perfectly white, then I would have needed to use something like enamel dots, or I could have die cut some tiny circles, stuck those down and then topped them off with a bit of glossy accents or morning dew. But as it was, it was absolutely fine. And that's this card finished. I do hope you found this video helpful and that it's given you a bit of an idea of something you could do with similar supplies that you've already got in your stash. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe, ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.